new horizon and a day and all came true Keller Williams you make dreams come true You're listening to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends. And here's Russ. Today I actually have a friend. I know last week I didn't have any friends, or last <laughs> month I should say. It was just me, myself, and I. Hey, uh, Gavin Johnson's with me. How you doing, you got Gavin? It. Doing good. Hey, uh, we're talking about the Alpine Group, your real estate uh, company in Leavenworth. And maybe for people that are in traditional real estate, Maybe they don't know what that means. And sometimes I think it can be confusing where there's, we call ourselves the Keller Williams team, but there's also people like yourself that have mm-hmm. opened their own group under right. the umbrella or the hub of information and resources that we provide to you as Keller Williams. So right. could you maybe talk to you, to you, why'd you do that and where are you at right now? Totally. I think one of the coolest things about Keller Williams is that you get not, I wouldn't say full autonomy, but pretty close you know, uh, with full support. So that's, that again, is just one of those other nuances about the company and, um, just the culture in general that, uh, kind of allows you to step out into a bigger space. So Gary Keller talks about blowing his world up so that people can blow their worlds up inside of his world. And I think that's really important, important when you're an entrepreneur and you're growing a business, because especially when you're dealing with a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of type a alpha, you know, alpha male, alpha female personalities, that want to have their cake, want to eat it too. And Gary says, that's okay. Listen, we're going to do this together. We're going to find lanes for you to get into so that you can blow your world up. And so what we did, what I did is, well, I know for me personally that I'm fueled by opportunity for myself, but I'm more fueled actually by opportunity for others. I love creating new opportunity for our team. And when, when that starts to click and they start to take the opportunities we put in front of them and turn them into real dollars, I mean, we see their lives being transformed. Michael Mock, great example. She mm-hmm. came into our business. She came into our uh, into our world with very little work experience. She didn't uh, have a ton of confidence. She would admit that right here with me, so I'm not saying anything that she wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but today is a very different story. A year later, yeah. she has grossed $81,000 in her first year. Unbelievable. Michael Mock. Michael I mean, really Mark. unreal. You know what? And she production. does it with a smile and you can tell your, your leadership is exemplified through her because, uh, you know, we tend to attract people that, that we kind of like we are a lot of times. And, and you're this way selfless. Like you said, you create opportunity for others where well, Michael Mock is the person that will always like a post. will always right. say congratulations, go out of her way on social media, go out of her way to make a phone call and just be transparently giving. Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden she's grossing 80,000 in her first year. And she's just, she's beside herself, right? She can't believe the success she's having. And I'm just excited for it. So to see her life being transformed and her to come in, I know this seems superficial, but to come in with new shoes and a new jacket with a big smile on, I mean, she deserves it. She's been working her butt off. Hey, hey, well, let's get real, man. I mean, there's a lot of people hurting right now. Yeah. There's a lot of people in COVID that, you know, in the hospitality business, the restaurant business, they're struggling out there. Um, I like to say that, I, a lot of times growing up, it used to be that it was risky to be a realtor, right? Because there's a lot of unknowns. But I would argue that what 2020 proved is that it's risky going to work for someone else because there's a lot of people that got furloughed without their permission. Totally. There's a lot Including of businesses. Redfin, by the way. Yeah. A lot of people that got <laughs> told they're not essential. A lot of people got told, close your business. It's not up to you. It's up to me, Mr. Government, totally. to tell you. So. You know, good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't matter what political ideology you have. The fact is, is there's risk in everything. At least with real estate, you can put the pedal to the metal and work hard, and and you'll see some results if you get in alignment with the right system, right? right? Because if you don't have the right system, I think it's really easy. That's It's really easy to fall flat, and, and to no fault of your own. I mean, the average training system in real estate historically was there's your phone, there's your desk, call your friends and family till you burn out. I'm going to Mexico <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I'm going to still own the company when I come back. Totally. So anyway, hey, speaking of selflessness, I want to talk about something you're involved in. 
Uh, and maybe you can just kick it off. What is family ties? Or family lines. Fi- fi- fam- I said family no, ties. No, you're good. You're family good. In lines. fact, we do some tying, too. We do some ply <laughs> tying. But Family Lines is a nonprofit that was started in 2010, started by John Hagedorn, and he created a team around him that is just full of incredible human beings, including a lot of business owners in Leavenworth. Um, but anyway, so the, the nonprofit is dedicated to restoring absence in fatherhood. And so we create different ways to do that from expeditions to Alaska, the Grand Ronde, down to Christmas Island. There's a lot of different ways that we can get people on board to create space and time for fathers and sons and daughters to get together and actually lean in to that relationship. A lot of times, either there's brokenness through childhood or maybe, you know, through adulthood, there's a separation in relationship. Um, and I actually got to take my dad on the Grand Ronde expedition in October and I, to say it was life giving is an understatement. I mean, it was fulfilling in so many ways. And the fact that I never, ever have to say, I wish I would have with my dad. That's a gift that I, I, you can't replicate any other way. Um, we also have uh, rod building workshops and fly tying workshops, just a lot of different ways that, uh, we pour back into fathers and daughters and sons and create dialogue. So it's comfortable to have these conversations. A lot of times, uh, we make excuses because we just don't know where to start. We don't know what to say or how to say it. And Family Lines, what we do is we facilitate those conversations to make it a lot easier, a lot more comfortable. So could you give me an example of what would happen? Like if I had, uh, is it somebody like I had, a, if I had a son or if someone had, a, if I had a daughter, I have both actually, how would it work? Like do I, would I call you and say, what's going on? Or Great question. Great question. So you, you can go on the uh, website familylines.org and you can book different workshops and different expeditions through the website. You can also call the phone number on the website as well, and you can book that way. Um, but the way that, that it works when you show up, the expectation, it's not this scripted, you know, sit down and we're just going to ask you a series of questions. It's, hey, let's get together. Let's sit side by side and just naturally and organically bring up conversations and topics that might just be difficult to do at the dinner table, right? And asking quite simple questions like, what's your favorite thing about your dad? What's your th- favorite thing about your daughter, right? And allowing them to just discuss those things. What's one thing you wish you would have said sorry about, you know, years ago that that you haven't? And maybe this is a good time just to say it now, yeah, right? And, and those types of things. And, sorry to interrupt you. No, you're uh, good. So is it one of those situations, should people feel like they're going to be forced to talk about anything? No, no. It's very we, comfortable. We, very comfortable. And you share as much as you like to share. Nobody forces you to say anything. Nobody pressures you to do anything you don't want to do. Um, and I also want to make this point. We also have a scholarship, uh, the Aaron Hagedorn Scholarship. They uh, raised $25,000 last year, and, and we're giving all of that away this year. So if finances are in the way of you spending that time with your father or your kids, don't let it be. Reach out to us. Let us let us bless you with that scholarship this year. Wow, man, that's amazing. Especially now with the last 2020 and COVID, you know, there's probably unprecedented, although that word seems to be overused right now, there's probably legit unprecedented times where families have been forced to redefine themselves. And it isn't all better roses, man. No. It is not. not always easy when you get displaced, and we both have been through hardships at various times in our lives. So the fact that you're involved in this, to me, is a great example of what you said in the first segment about how uh, generosity can be a part of your business model, be a part of your business plan, and giving back to your community. Right. Um, right. Especially, you know, so often it seems that when things get tough, that's when everybody turns inward. And, and looks at, you know, the opposite of selflessness, right? They're starting, they just look, totally. it's, it's all me, myself, and I, that's it, that's it, that's it. I can't, I don't have time to deal with anybody else. And then, unfortunately, that's the same time when everybody needs help. Right. Right? So the fact that you're, uh, you're getting involved in, in Family Lines, uh, and again, familylines.org, right? Familylines.org. So I'm on the board of directors, um, but I've also joined the team of instructors for the Fly Fishing Academy. And so you can also go to fly, uh, sorry, familylinesflyfishing.com and you can actually book. Not This is actually dedicated to anyone and everyone that just wants to get out and enjoy themselves on the water. This doesn't really have to do with the intentionality of conversation. The academy itself is a little bit different. Familylines.org uh, takes care of those facilitations. Family, Family Lines Fly Fishing Academy 
is really set out to uh, tackle some of the tourism in Leavenworth, really. So if you're looking to get out and just spend some time with family members or just learn fly fishing in general, let me take you out there. I'd love to take you out on the water. Icicle Creek's my home water, and it is gorgeous. You can't have a bad time fishing for little trout on Icicle Creek. It's wonderful. So come see us. Come check it out. That's, that's, you know, that's just a good example. And, you know, that wasn't on your radar two years ago. No. This is something that your courage uh, to be vulnerable, frankly. And I want to I want to dive back into this real estate concept a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you and you were at a boutique broker brokerage and, and try to put yourselves in the shoes and mindset of people at other brokerages right now, like you were. Like you said, there's a lot of great companies out there doing great things. What goes through a person's mind as they're thinking about change when they know they need something? What's the fear around that? And what could you tell them that might help? Um, first and foremost, I, I truly believe that we have intuition and a gut instinct for a reason. And I think your gut's telling you the story you need to listen to. Uh, whether or not you're willing to or whether or not you're just distracting yourself over and over, there's a really natural occurrence in everybody's career, especially in real estate or especially in an entrepreneurial type uh, atmosphere where you ask yourself the question, does this make sense for me anymore? Have I outgrown this model? And if, if, if the answer is yes, if it doesn't make a lot of sense that you keep dumping all these funds back into the firm you're working for, yes, okay, they have a business model. They're there to be profitable. There's no, there's no hidden secrets about that. However, does it make sense when you have the knowledge, skill sets, and tools and resources in front of you to continue to pay that money? It just it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And when you get there, it's time to make a change, and I understand the hardship of actually making that decision, but you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, the authenticity that you're talking with is exactly the integrity foundation that we come from. Mm -hmm. And it's it's about abundance, right? You know, I, I believe personally, and it wasn't always this way for me. I'm a pretty competitive guy, but I believe personally that you can do very, very well and not at the expense of someone else. Totally. So, um, one of the things that, that we like to share is that abundant mindset with people. And you're a great example of how that worked from the, the beginning where you made the, the decision with courage to make a change with going into the unknown with an unknown yeah. company, at least in this area. Although Keller's the biggest company in the world, but <laughs> <laughs> around here, nobody knew it. Um, it's an interesting time. So when we get back, I'd love to talk about where you're going. You know, we talked a little bit about expansion, but where are you going in the future? Keller Williams. 